Unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the Word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the Word. Jeremiah 29 verses 13. Jeremiah 29 verses 13. The Bible says, And ye shall seek me, and find me, when ye shall seek Touch for me with all your heart. He says, and you shall seek me and find me when you shall search me with all your heart. I have scriptures in life that are so dear and special to me because some of those scriptures were gifts for me in an inner realm of purpose, service in my God and answers for the challenges and questions that I had in God. This is one of my most favorite scriptures. I love it. It is something that I have put anywhere I've had an altar. It's one of my most favorite scriptures in the Bible because there's things it opens to me. And every time I read it, I read it anew. It opens anew. It's fresh for me. It just brings out something so beautiful. And I find myself overly excited because every time I read it, it opens so much in my spirit. And I want to welcome you to that world. I want to share that world with you today. Somebody shout hallelujah. Because this is like my personal private thing. Now, he said, you shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart. What does that mean? It is impossible for a man to seek and search God a certain way and fail to find him. This is the key, this is the gate, this is the door, this is the access that I talk about every time when I tell you that it doesn't matter how much you have, it matters how much you can access. Somebody shout hallelujah. It matters how much you are able to what? To access. And I want to show you how. I want to show you the ways of access. The windows of access. I tell people that we fall short of the glory of God, all of us, even the greatest. Sometimes we err in the flesh, not in the spirit. Are you hearing me? We have, we believe in the perfection of God, because the Bible says it's able to keep us from falling. And so we aspire every day to submit ourselves to that aspiration. But while we are on that journey of perfection of the flesh, okay, we find that sometimes we make errors. Or some of us have made errors. When you look back in your past, oh my God, you regret many things. And some of those things that have happened in your life have either damaged a part of you, your esteem, some of you, they have affected your faith in God. Some of you, they have disconnected you from the things and the people you need. Some of you, they have altered a lot in the course of your destiny. Yes, granted. But I tell people that it doesn't matter how far a righteous man will fall. He must know how to find his way back. You understand what I'm saying? There are people who in that space 
of trouble have failed to find their grip and move on and reconstruct history, biblical, church, has spoken without numbers and given numerous of examples of men when something happened of disconnection failed to reconnect again to a certain source spiritually. And so that is why I tell people and believers always that take heed of people who know the way, who know how. Their ministers whose ministries can go down to zero but they know how to rebuild. And there are people who have built so big that if anything ever happens, they will never know how to recuperate. They will never revive again. Is it the will of God for a man to stay down? No. It's not the will of God for a man to stay down. But we can agree that some people simply don't know how to find their way back to find God when they need him. We are New Testament creatures. We understand present truth realities and we know that Jesus Christ is in us. In him we live, move and have our own what? Being. He dwells in us. Granted. Okay? So when I'm talking about the searching of God, I'm not talking about a man going to heaven to search him or going under to search him or seeking a God as one who is far from you. No. He's in you. But I'm talking about the ability to be able to tap in you of that God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout amen. I'm talking about the ability to know how to connect to that God inside you or in whom you live, move, and have your own being. And so, what if you woke up tomorrow and you made one decision of business and all your millions of billions of shillings or dollars are sunk? Do you know how to reconstruct? Because that's how you know people who have built by a certain knowledge or people who have built by chance. You understand? Because the Bible says time and chance happens to them all. There's that sanctum of chance. It's available for us. I was chanced that I met this person and somehow my destiny was aligned to this here. So why did that person flip? What if that business changed course? Huh? What, what do you do? You're a minister, and then you wake up tomorrow, and some matters are not even your doing, and they put a stupid scandal on you. The devil hits an attack that could kill your ministry and wipe it out. We've been through that. We've seen it. It's not the attacks that destroy. Yes, they shake ministries. But when a man of God knows how to find God, how to find God, God. How to find God. In spite of all that happens around them, that man will never stay down. That woman will never what? Stay down. Are you hearing me? Even when anything in life has ended, that man will know how to reconstruct their lives and then even be better than what happened before. But you must know how. There are many believers who are stuck in one place, in life, in ministry, in business, in relationships, and you can examine yourself and understand. A spiritual man can tell when they're making headway or when they're not making headway. You can tell it when you're spiritual. But there are people, and what scares is not that they're in a period of things not moving as they should. What scares is if a man does not know how to move. It means if you don't know how to move, you're going to stay stuck. It means you'll be examined years later and people will see that nothing is changing on your life. Nothing is changing on your life. Nothing is changing on your life. One year, two, three, four, five years, ten. But you're Christian. You confess the scriptures. You know them. But nothing is changing your life. Why? Because you don't know the way how. You don't know the way how. You don't know the way how. And this is why I love Jeremiah 29, 13. He said, he has given us the antidote here. He says, you shall seek me and find me if you seek me with all your heart. Oh, but pastor, there's this fellow. He has given his life to the gospel. He's serving. 
But he doesn't have results. Oh, this lady, she's the first at church. She's the last at church. Oh, this guy in Satan, he's setting up equipment every Sunday. He's in, he's out. And God appreciates all of that. Oh, she's in choir. She waits on this. She does this. She does this. But there's something on her life that is simply not changing. Why? But this is a person who loves God. This is a person who submits to the word of God. Why aren't they seeing results? They are praying every Thursday, they are attending Friday meetings, they are on prayer conferences, they are in drives, they are mobilizing, they are street preaching. A lot is happening in their life, but we don't see results and changes. We don't see them move to the next level. We don't see them to have found God a certain way. Why? Because they don't know the way to find God. But they're seeking with all their heart. No, that's your definition with all your heart. Your definition is an emotional disposition. You understand what I'm saying? Your definition of with all your heart is of emotional disposition. Some people think that the more emotional they are, dispels their fervency of spirit. They can find two men weeping on the altar, and one is just emotional, one is fervent in spirit. You can tell. You can tell a fervent prayer man and an emotional person. And both of them can be praying the same way, weeping the same way, interceding the same way, speaking the same way, serving the same way, but one is emotional in disposition and the other is fervent in spirit. And two men are going to produce two different results doing the same thing because one man knows the way and the other man does not know the way. Somebody shout amen. So when we say you shall seek me and find me when you shall touch me with all your heart, that's the antidote, that's the answer, that's the real McCoy. That is the pillar right there. He says, no man which seeks me with all their heart cannot find me. So I want to deal with that and deal firstly away with the emotional and then first help you connect to what I mean with all your heart. What does it mean to seek God with all your heart? Somebody shout, Amen. The Bible speaks of Hezekiah in 2 Chronicles 31 verses 20. The Bible says, And thus did Hezekiah throughout all Judah, and wrought or did that which was good and right and truth before the Lord his God. And the Bible says, And in every work that he began in the service of the house of God, and in the law, and in the commandments to seek his God, the Bible says he did it with all his heart, and he prospered. He prospered. Prosperity in the things of God is attached to men who do things with all their heart. When a man does something with all their heart, they will prosper. How can a believer fail when you have read Jeremiah 29? How do you fail? How do you say you have failed? How can you fail? Let me ask this way. Why are you failing? Why are you not producing results that are supposed to follow your testimony and faith in Christ Jesus with all the promises that you have obtained to partake of the divine nature? How can you fail when God has told you that you shall seek me and find me when you search me or when you seek me with all your heart? Oh, so now God is telling the Christian the ingredient is in with all my heart. I need to understand how with all my heart works. How do I seek God with all my heart? Is it that when I scream a lot, I'm seeking with all my heart? Is it that when I'm praying a lot, it's with all my heart? Is it because when I'm shaking, it's with all my heart? How do I seek God with all my heart? That's what you need to know. Because if you understand how to seek with all your heart, he says, you shall find. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout amen. amen. Now, let's start to define. When you study Hebrew, and then read that word with all your heart. It's actually the Hebrew word leubaub. And leubaub means also understanding. Did you hear that? Now, if we go back to the scripture in Jeremiah 29, 13, I would read it this way. It says, you shall seek me uh -huh, and find me when you search me with understanding. Did you hear that? Did you understand that? He says, you shall seek me and find me when you search for me with understanding. In the definitions of that word is also understanding. He's talking about the understanding of the inner man. 
Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout amen. amen. And so how do I define understanding? This is my own definition. Understanding, if you want to write, is the power to hear or examine language. It's the power to hear or examine language. That's understanding. To, the power to hear or examine language. And in this instance, we're talking of the divine module. To understand the language of God. That's the difference between the ways of God and the way of God. Are you hearing me? It's one way to know the way of God. Okay? And the ways of God. The manifestations of the way are the ways. The plural sense, when he says ways, he speaks of the manifold things that reveal his way. His way of doing things. If a man can examine and interpret divine language, if a man can examine and interpret divine language, if a man can examine and interpret divine language, that man has understanding. If a man can connect to the divine module and understand how God speaks, that man has received understanding. And he says, you'll seek me and find me if you seek me or search me with understanding. You can be emotional all you want and make a wreck of yourself before the presence of God. But it doesn't matter how emotional you are, if your emotion is not connected to how to find and connect to understanding, then you are wasting time. That's the difference between men who know how to rebuild even the most broken fortresses and men who when their fortresses are broken, their destinies are gone. David messed up. He killed Uriah and took over his wife Bathsheba. Judgment befell David and his household. But he was a man who knew how to find God. And he went in the presence of God. And before we knew that, after that, yes, he lost the son. But God still rebuilt David's dynasty, his empire, his testimony, and he finished well. And scripture is full of men who knew how to find God. Now that's the essence of Hezekiah. A prophet comes to him and tells him, you're going to die. Prepare your household. This was divine judgment. But he was a man who knew how to find God. Otherwise, Jeremiah was going to die. Because in scripture, when God told a man, you're going to die, the Hananias died. When he told him, you're going to die, they died. The men in scripture, when God pronounced death on them, divine judgment, they died. But look at a man who God tells you are going to die. Put your house in order. This was divine plan. I can say that he had come to an end of all weeks. And the Bible says he turned to God. Are you hearing me? He what? He turned to God. And when he turned to God and prayed, the Bible says as the prophet was walking, as he had reached in the middle of the court, the Bible says the word of the Lord came to him saying, Go back and tell Hezekiah, the captain of our people, that said, The Lord, the God of David, thy father, I have heard your prayer, I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee, and on the third day thou shalt go up into the house of the Lord. And you know what happens? Hezekiah had another 15 years added on his destiny because he knew how to find God. I tell people it doesn't matter how bad things have been or are in your life. It doesn't matter how many things have fallen apart. Indeed, things do fall apart. It doesn't matter how many attacks are in your life. It doesn't matter how many things are around you. You better know how to find God when you seek Him. The Bible says, though He be not far. God is not far. No, it's just us without the understanding of how to connect to the God who is near. Who is with us. He said, I'm ever present. He says, I'm the friend that speaketh closer than a brother. I am in you. I am the great I am. I am in you. And you are in me. How can I be far from you? But listen, a man can die with God in him. A man's destiny can be put in disarray with God in him. A man's life can be appended to destruction of him, all the things around him, even with God on him and in him. If that man does not know how to connect to the spirit, of understanding. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout amen. So, we want to define the seeker with understanding. Not the seeker 
with an emotional predisposition. Say amen. I know people who have gone on prayer mountains. I know people who have fasted for years for something. They serve and starve and do everything for themselves because they are believing God for a particular breakthrough and answer. And honestly, you see the piety and fear of God is there. The reverence of God is there, but they never seem to get it. And then I know people who just go on their knees for 10 minutes and something happens. They go on their knees for two minutes and something happens. This is the thing that I struggled with for so many years. I always ask God, how does a man connect? I wanted to reconcile that thing. I wanted to know how to connect to this. I just wanted to connect to a certain flow. And the Lord told me, I am the way. I just need to show you the way. You need to build business in a way where you know how to. You understand? You need to build ministry when you know how to. You need to run a career when you know how to. You need to do marriage when you know how to. You understand what I'm saying? That is why he emphasizes on how to hear. He says, take heed how you hear. Because the space of a how is a revelation of the way. Luke 8, 18. He says, whosoever hath to him shall be given, and whosoever hath not that understanding, the Bible says, from him shall be taken even that which he seemeth to have. Even that which he seemeth to have shall be taken. And this explains the plight of many Bible-believing Christian, New Testament realities, grace, ministers, preachers, Christian, believers who believe in the New Testament, free and delivered by the power of God, new creation. And they still fail to connect to this. He says it's understanding. Why do you come to church? Understanding. Why do you pray the way you pray? Why are you submitted to the ministry you're submitted to? Why do you serve where you serve? Why do you hear the words you hear? How do you hear the words you hear? How do you pray? How do you serve? How do you give yourself and give to God? How? Because all of these explain and express a certain understanding. If you don't have that understanding, you will be amazed at how far you are from the course of purpose, of the interpretation of dreams, of prosperity, of increase, of multiplication, of everything that touches your life. You will be amazed at the things people do for the wrong understanding. That some people can even do way better than anybody else has done it. And they do it so excellently than anybody else has done it. But their motive is deceived. They're serving for the wrong thing. And then if that thing doesn't happen the way they want it, they disconnect. What an offense to the spirit of Christ. You are serving for someone? You are serving for something? And so if that thing doesn't go the way you want it, what happens? They disconnect. Then you ask yourself, but this person, they serve, they love, they're in the presence of God. What happened? And they disconnected. Maybe it was a woman or a man that you wanted. And then someone tells you, which is not God. And then you see someone serving. And then that person tomorrow is taken. And what happens? Disconnect. Because they don't understand why they're serving God. Maybe somebody is broke. They told him, if you serve God, you'll get money. Now they start serving. Because they want to get what? Money. They want to get money. And so they serve for money. They serve. Because they're tired of poverty. They have a problem in their house. So let me go and seek God. My marriage is failing. Let me go and sit in the presence because I hear when you sit in the presence, your marriage heals. Yes. And all that could be fixed. But why do you really seek God? Why are you in the presence of God? What's the bigger picture? Are you hearing me? So understanding is key. Do you have understanding of why God has placed you where you are and why you're doing what you are doing? Ultimate question. Understanding. Understanding. The spirit of understanding is the spirit that opens your heart to hear the divine language when divine counsel comes. Are you hearing me? Because 
in every situation, every problem, every circumstance that surrounds your life, all you need is to hear the voice of God. That's all you need. That's all you need. To hear the voice of what? God. You can do whatever you want to do, but if you don't hear the voice of God, you cannot move. I always tell people I'm a laggard in some ways, or in many ways, that I'm someone who takes my time in many things. As people plan conferences, meetings, I can delay them sometimes, and printings are delayed, uh, you know, art is delayed, and it's not that I am relaxed about it. I'm not relaxed about it. I'm not careless about it, but I want to hear God. I want to hear God. And there's some things, sometimes, where I get to the end of it and say, no, I'm not going to do it. You'd have invested in it. And I just cancel. Why? Because the council came and told me, don't. And I know the cost and price of going off the course of purpose. Somebody shout, amen. The Bible says, counsel in the heart of a man, Proverbs 20, is as deep waters in the heart of a man. Counsel in the heart of a man is as deep deep waters, or is like deep waters, but it says, but only the man with understanding can draw it out, will draw it out. Only a man with understanding. It's in there. It's in there. It's in there. You all know the scriptures. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above that which you dare to ask or think, according to the working power, which worketh in your pastor? Answer me. Which worketh in your prophet? Your evangelist? your teacher, your apostle? No. He says, according to the working power that worketh in you. I wish people understood this. That means the essence of every minister toward you is to stir what is inside enough for you to receive understanding that you cause out a counsel out of you that will take you to the next level of your destiny. Somebody shout hallelujah. That's it. That's it. Do you know why you keep coming? Because every time I talk, there's something inside you that I provoke. You feel it. I'm stirring it. Every time you come in this presence, something inside you is stirred. You come out and say, this man is talking about me on every someone. He's talking about me. But everybody feels the same. Why? Because I am touching something that is awakening something, giving, stirring something inside you. I'm giving you understanding. So you can draw that which is inside you. Let me tell you, for every man God has created, everything you need is inside you. Somebody shout hallelujah. Everything you need is inside you. It's inside you. It's inside you. Everything. Your next job is here. Your next career is here. Your marriage is here. Your business is here. Your acmes are here. Your creations are here. Everything is there. Nothing that you need is not inside you. When God wanted to create man a helper, he went inside him. When he identified man's first need, he went inside man. He didn't go outside man. God is not going to change the order. Everything you need is inside there. So when Eve comes out, Adam says, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. Why? Because when man needed, he saw that man was lonely. He needed. When a man is in need, anything you need, God will always go inside. Somebody shout, Amen. So the essence of that then is that you learn as a believer to connect to that counsel. Because all you need is the voice of God. If you lose that, some people are so carnal that they don't understand it. And so what do they do? They start looking without. They start looking without. They go outside them to find an answer for their need. You will never find it. It's not outside you. Some hope church to church I need a job, church to church, I need marriage, church to church, I need breakthrough, demons are strangling me, church to church, I need healing, evangelist to preacher, I need deliverance, evangelist to prophet, I need deliverance, prophet to apostle, 
I need answers. You're looking outside, yet the thing is inside. Are you hearing me? All you need in this life is to settle where somebody can open your well. Your river can stir it. If you are not stirred, you can never move. You can amass 20 teachers around you, read all their books, watch YouTube, do all the stuff in the world you want. But until you find a voice that can command something inside you and call it out. And call it out. So what's the essence of men of God? The essence of a man of God is a voice in him that can connect to the voice inside you. If you find a man who can connect and you feel that they are opening it, with them you hear God. With them you can connect to God a certain way and can see and observe that their life is patterned after something. Now that's divine connection. Divine connection is not when you meet someone who can connect you to your next ministry. Divine connection is when you meet someone who can connect to you in you. To you in what? In you. That's divine connection. That's how inheritance is a birth. Because some people don't understand the principles of how to work around people who have certain graces and anointings. Some people don't know how to tap into graces. They don't know how to connect to anointings. There's a reason why when Elisha meets Elijah and Elijah goes up with a wall and wind, he says, my father, my father, the horseman and chariot of Israel, they are of. What's the next line? The next line says he tore his clothes. That means he tore his mantle off. And the Bible says he rent them in two, two pieces. And the Bible says immediately he took up the mantle of Elijah. You must know how to connect to great mantles. To walk. Elisha was not an ordinary man. Understand me. Elisha was not an ordinary man. But there was something on him that had to be connected to a certain mantle. What was the mantle? Elijah was the horseman and chariot of Israel. Elisha was not looking for a deeper prophetic grace. Elisha was looking for a national responsibility. Who understands what I'm saying? Elijah was a prophet. The 7,000 that were hid were prophets. Elisha was a prophet. He was not receiving a deeper realm of the prophetic. He was receiving the ministry of the chariot and the horseman of Israel, the protection of a nation. That mantle was seated on one man. The sons of the prophets are telling Elisha, do you know the Lord is taking away your master? They think that for them that's the depth of prophecy. He's telling them, I know, but they don't get it. That's why later when that separation takes place, they said truly, the spirit of Elijah settles on him. And what happens? They bow to him. Why? Because they were given an understanding that Elisha was not simply serving Elijah for deeper prophetic ministry. He was serving Elijah for the responsibility of the horsemen and chariots of Israel. That's why Joash later, when Elisha is going to die, he repeats the same words on his life. He says, you are my father, my father, the horseman and chariot of Israel. He saw the same anointing settling on Elijah, settled on Elisha. So you must know how to connect to great mantles. When you learn that, you realize that you can be a prophet and stay a good prophet. And even receive impartations of deeper prophecy and still stay there. Are you hearing me? But when you can identify, are you hearing me, responsibilities that are bigger than offices, now you've started understanding how mantles work. That is why there was no way Elisha would wear his clothes on Elijah's mantle. There was no way Elisha would wear his clothes on Elijah's mantle. Because oil is poured on garments. <laughs> certain oils are poured on garments. Not all, but certain oils are poured on garments, not individuals. 
that's how you be distinct between the gift on your life and the assignment of God and purpose concerning a generation. Those two things are different. All are prophets, but not all match a certain space. All are apostles, but not all have a certain voice. All are teachers, but not all are teaching the world. All are pastors, but not all are pioneering. You must understand. You must know how that works. Somebody shout amen. Understanding. Understanding. It changes the way you pray. So because it's a place of instruction, it's a place of counsel that you need. You learn how to seek for understanding. He says it's in there. Counsel is in there. The answer for your next job is there. The answer for why you're stuck is there. The answer for why things are not working the way they should is there. It's inside you. It's inside you. But you just need to connect to understanding. You just need to connect to what? To understanding. To understanding. I had a conversation recently with a wonderful friend of mine and he reminded me of a situation that I had in university. Myself. There was a guy I remember entering the meeting. This man was anointed. In fact, I remember the first time I saw him do certain things. I told him, can I follow you wherever you go? Can I just follow you? I just loved how God was working through this man. Great, great fellow. Very great fellow. And I remember during our university days, a group of us encountered God. Up to today, I'm still surprised at what happened to him. Up to today. It happened in my life where I have observed a man who has failed so bad that I wonder, how did this guy miss it? Because in campus, he was one of those people we went to. And he would start speaking and we can't move. He would speak up to 1, 2 a.m. and he can't move. I remember he would start speaking and ask him, can I just follow you? And we walk when the guy is speaking. And I don't want him to stop speaking. And I remember there were times he would speak up to 2 a.m. And I'm seated, I'm listening. There were times this guy would speak for six hours. And I'm seated, I'm listening to him. I can't get enough. Because there was something when the guy would just get on the pulpit and say, put up your hands. Something would happen. When this guy just says, put up your hands. It's as though you felt God just come to you. Like the spirit says, I'm ready. What are we to do? Before you know that the whole room is dead. Out. But I observed his life as I was growing and I realized he was a very gifted man but never connected to understanding. Yet he had the language that moved with his gift. And that can be deceptive when a man has a language that moves with a gift. You can think he knows God because of the things that sporadically come out of him. Spasms of revelation, they're just poof. They're like, this God only can reveal. Flesh and blood did not reveal. You remember the experience of Peter where he says you are the Christ of God? And then just a few days later, Satan is talking through him. You know why? Because he had experiences where God would sit on him for divine wisdom. And that can be so taken and can confuse those that are observing him. Because when Satan speaks through him, they will not tell. This guy, I remember, one of those days, he made a decision, and I remember very well as his junior, but I felt it was the biggest decision of his life. He made a decision into a certain career. And I remember I called him and I said, you know what, Papa, I honor you, I love you, I respect what's upon you, but I feel this is wrong says, no, God, no, no, I hear God. He went into something. One thing led to another. One led to another. His life was destroyed totally. And I remember one day, evening, he calls me at about 11 p.m. And he said, I need to see you now. Now, when a man has touched me somewhere in my destiny, there are things that stay with me. There are things I can never do against them 
all their things that I will always stand to do for them. And I tell people, when you respect God and His Spirit, if anybody has ever put something in you spiritual, never set yourself against them, even if they do. Even if they do. Don't answer. Don't answer. You're honoring God. So, during that time, he had disconnected, everything had failed, his life had failed, his marriage had failed, his relationship had failed. He was zero and had nobody in his life. And he calls me 11 p.m. and told me, I need to see you now. Because of the man I knew, I told him, where are you? I drove that night, I reached him about midnight. And I remember when he met me, he just went on his knees and said, pray for me. He went down. I remember these army guys that work at night phoned us. And uh, they started, you know, what are you doing here? Why is he nearly, why are you standing here? We had to explain to them and tell them we are Christians who are praying. Midnight. And as I was going to lay hands on him, I started weeping. Not because of what had befallen this man, but because of the understanding in him. And this is why I wept. Because he thought that the anointing on me was to get the issues surrounding him to leave. Because he thought that those issues were the problem. But those issues were not the problem. No. Those issues were not the problem. Those challenges were not the problem. The problem was that he did not have a certain understanding. And even in his seeking, if his heart was to seek, it would seek God for the wrong thing. And why am I weeping? Because I'm asking God, can I explain to him that his problem is understanding? And God told me he will not hear you. So I asked, what should I pray for? He's on his floor, on the floor, weeping. The Lord told me, pray that I preserve him until he will have understanding. I prayed. Between me and you, I saw the next of his days they were going to wash him. And as I'm speaking, that man is in prison cell. It's not the decisions that he did that put him in prison. Not all who have wronged are in prison. And some even who are there are innocent. But it is the understanding that he lacked. And because of that, Satan took advantage and has destroyed the man's destiny before our eyes. And he's going to be in prison for a long time because of the kind of case that has failed him there. I saw that one day he will wake up late in his 50s. But how much will he have lost? I don't know. You know, I don't know whether it sinks on us to understand that you have only one life. That's why the Bible says that in everything you do, do it so well. For the grave has no places where men plan for enterprises, investments, and all these things. Do it so well. Because when you die, you have only one life. And something can happen on your life and paralyze your next 30 years of destiny. 30 years of the life of a man are very dangerous. 20 years of the life of a man are very dangerous. 40 years of the life of a man can set you so far that people can look at you, even only one year behind schedule, can destroy a lot. But there are people who you meet and they are set 20 years back, 30 years, 40 years, backward. That by the time 10 years comes or 20 or 30, where their peers will be, they will be so far. And catching up might become impossible. Or even if they do, a lot has been lost in the time of life that they might not enjoy the things they should have enjoyed at a very early age. Don't play with this one life you have. Invest understanding. When God meets Solomon in a dream, in 1 Kings chapter 3, verses 9, Solomon, in a dream, he elevates the man's soul to communicate with him as a divine. And God asks him, what do you want me to do? For you. Solomon asks in verses 9, he says, Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart, he says, to judge thy people that I may discern between good and bad, for who is able to judge this thy so great a people? And the Bible says, And the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. Now the word there for speech is language. The language pleased the Lord. You remember what I talked about? to examine divine language, to speak in divine module, 
right? And the Bible says, And God said unto him, Because thou hast asked this thing, and hast not asked for thyself long life, things Christians ask for, neither ask for riches for thyself, things Christians ask for, nor has asked for the life of thine enemies, things Christians ask for, because you have not asked for a husband, a child, a job, a car, a business breakthrough, because you have not asked for that, but have asked for a heart of understanding. He says, Behold, I have done according to thy word. And he says, Lo, I have given thee, listen, a wise and understanding heart. And he says, so that there shall be none like thee before thee, neither after thee arise like unto thee. That is any man. Now he's talking about men of the flesh before the New Testament, before the New Covenant. None had understanding and wisdom like him, he's saying. But I want you to get this. He says, because you ask for an understanding heart, he says, lo, I have given thee a wise and understanding heart. Did he ask for wisdom? No. What did he ask for? And what did God give him? Wisdom and understanding. Why did he give him wisdom and understanding? Proverbs 14, verses 33. Wisdom resteth where understanding is. Did you understand that? Wisdom resteth where understanding is. So when a man asks for understanding, wisdom has to come. Solomon never asked for wisdom. People say Solomon asked for wisdom. Solomon never asked for wisdom. Solomon asked for the ability to hear the language, to examine divine language. And because he asked for that, wisdom came with it. Solomon never asked for wisdom, I repeat. He asked for an understanding heart. He asked for understanding. That's why in prayer he says, My son, with all I am getting, an understanding. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. With I in getting, get understanding. He says, get wisdom, the principal thing. And with all I in getting, get understanding. They look like they're the same, but they're two different things. Somebody shout hallelujah. Say amen. There are people who wisdom comes to date, goes tomorrow, like the people of the world. Their wisdom is brought to nothing because today they are wise, tomorrow they... But he said, when you have understanding, wisdom rests. Do you know the meaning of resting? It means it never leaves, it stays. Now, if Christ has become your wisdom, he has given you an understanding. The question is, are you connected to that understanding? Do you interpret that understanding? Do you relate to that understanding? Do you know how to work with an understanding? Do you know how to communicate with the understanding given you in Christ? Say amen, somebody. Amen. Say amen, somebody. Amen. The Bible says in Proverbs 15, 14, now I'm getting to the point. The heart of him that hath understanding seeketh knowledge. Okay? Seeketh knowledge. Now I want you to understand this. There is a seeker with understanding. And any seeker with understanding does not seek deliverance. They don't seek breakthrough. They don't seek healing. They don't seek a job. They don't seek a wife or a husband. They don't seek God for a consultation business. They seek knowledge. Now, are you seeing the seeker with understanding versus the seeker with emotional disposition. Someone who is just emotional. Oh God. <laughs> when will you come through? <laughs> you understand? But this one is just emotional. But as a man with understanding, the Bible says the Son of God has given us an understanding. That means we are supposed to be in the realm that seeketh for knowledge. Can I connect it for you? Remember he has said cancer in the heart of a man is as deep waters. But only the man with understanding draws it out, okay? Only the man with understanding draws it out. So when I speak in tongues, when a challenge comes, when I speak in tongues, I'm stirring understanding. 
enough to get counsel for a thing. Did you hear that? When I pray or speak in tongues, I'm not praying about the problem. Father, deliver me, heal me. But you were healed by his stripes. Provide for me. He became poor that you might be rich. Why are we talking about provision here? All things in Christ are here and the men to the glory of God. He has given you everything that pertains to life and godliness. He has blessed you with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. The understanding is that it's available and it's in here. So I start rapakata. I'm not praying for the problem to go, no. I'm praying for understanding. I'm praying to star understanding. Yes, things are going down. Yeah, yeah. But I'm not afraid because I know it doesn't matter how bad a thing is. Have I had God in the matter? That's all that matters. So what do I need? Counsel. What do I do? Zerila bayanda ko satalapa. Woo! Satalapa. What am I doing? You know, I've seen people who get sick people and then they put hands on them and they say, ta 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 But instead they're saying, heal, heal. You're missing it, darling. You're missing it, darling. You're missing it, darling. You have the life of God in you. There is no way he's not going to heal. Simply connect with the understanding for the counsel that heals. For he says, with counsel shall you wage a good war. You cannot fight spiritually. He says the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they are mighty in Christ for the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, breaking every high thing that exalted itself against our knowledge in Christ and bringing to captivity all thoughts to the obedience of Christ. So your war really can only be waged by counsel. For in a multitude of counselors, they are your faith. When the spirit of counsel is around you. Somebody shout hallelujah. When counsel engulfs you, you are what? Safe. Whether you're in the biggest trouble, you can actually tell someone, it doesn't matter what is happening. I know that inside me, I'm fortified in the safety of God. How? Because you have known how to start understanding. Yes, you get bad news. Somebody has died. Katalapaya. Zaralalabayete. All I'm seeking in my life is to study understanding given me to bring it to my mind so i can connect with the counsel god has given me are you hearing me god is what given me you start speaking in, speaking in tongues you speak in tongues you speak in tongues you speak in tongues you're seeking for knowledge you're seeking for what for knowledge you're seeking for a certain knowledge because you know satan cannot stand against it is written he has no answer he has no answer he has no power he has nothing on a man who has understood but how do i connect to rema how do i start logos for the rema that works not the anxious word some people get anxious words and they call them rema that's why they're not working no there's a difference between an anxious word and rema rema is out of a man of understanding and it is start when you start praying in the spirit you wake up and say rakata propata lapa kirabata but i'm praying to the god which is within me he says he's able to do according to the working power that worketh in you and before i know a certain understanding forms up. I'll give you an example. There was a time we got attacks from two ministries and they all happened in the same period. And they told their members, they started going on Facebook, internet, they spoke. And I remember one of those days we looked in the back and we had lost more than 400 members in just a period of two months. And God, Papa, what can we do? I told her, leave that for me. It was the end of November. I told her, give me up to Feb. I'll fix it. I went to God that time, and I spoke in tongues, I spoke in tongues, and I spoke in tongues, and I spoke in tongues, and that night God made one sentence, and I knew that was the counsel. That was the council, 2016 into 2017. I told them, give me up to Feb. Go and look at the souls that were won in 2017. You realize that the month that won most souls was Feb. 
in that month of February 2017, from that date of November, by the time we reached end of Feb, the numbers that were lost on chairs were doubled by Feb. They were doubled by Feb. We had added 800 chairs, and they are hold all fields, and we didn't have where to put people. That's called understanding. But during that time, words were spoken. That's a sign he's gone. He's gone. That's a sign that he's gone. No, I wasn't. Because I knew how to find God. Even if I walk out and everybody walked out, I still know how to find God. I know how to find God. No one person can break this ministry. Not 2,000, not 20,000, because I know how to find God. Now, in Jeremiah 3, verses 15, he says, and I will give you pastors according to my heart. What is the heart of God? It's the heart of understanding, isn't it? He says, I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with what? With knowledge and what? Why do you go to church? For a prophetic word? Someone goes to church waiting. Let me wait until they call me. They didn't call me today. Then the next time they come, let me wait until they call me. Please call me. What's so? Prophet. Evangelist. Why haven't they called me? Can I pay money to meet the man of God so he can speak a word on my life? Because you think your destiny is in men's mouth. <laughs> no. Why do you go to church? To receive knowledge and what? And understanding. And here is the guarantee. The next verse says, And it shall come to pass that when you be multiplied and increased. He didn't say if. He didn't say if. He said when you be multiplied and increased. That means when you sit where knowledge and understanding is, multiplication and increase are inevitable. So what if you lost a million shillings but you have increased 20? So what if you lost a billion shillings but you have made 10 more billion? So what if you have lost 20 million dollars and made another 100 tomorrow morning? The issue is increase and multiplication. And when you get to that realm, it's not an if, it's a when. Come on, speak another time. Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Create something. Star understanding. 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 It's in there. Christ is your wisdom and understanding. Just star. Star the gift of God in you. Star. 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 Roll. Roll. Your lion. Roll. You were great. You were great. You were great. Come on. It's coming. That's it. That's it. You were great. You were great. 
Santa. You will bring You're building a fortress. You're roaring into a destiny. An empire is coming out of you. Nations are changing. You will bring You will bring you were great. Oh, you were great. You were great. Oh, you were great. Oh, you were great. Oh, you were great. Oh, Everything uh, Tell him, and just plan over la Come on, deeper, deeper, deeper. You're throwing cancel. 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 That's what they call praying through. You're throwing cancel. You're throwing cancel. You're throwing cancel. Throw. Throw. God is rebuilding you. God is rebuilding your house. God is rebuilding your home. God is rebuilding your children. God is rebuilding your health. God is rebuilding your vision. God is rebuilding your ministry. God is reconstructing. God is building. Sala <laughs> Come on, grow, 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 
And so I speak upon your life in the name of Jesus. That answers are here. Answers are for you. Solutions are for you. Counsel is you. And it's surrounding everything that touches your life. I decree and declare that your days are greater. The worst has already happened. Great days await you in the name of Jesus. He's working in you both to will and to do according to his good pleasure. Answers are coming. The glory of God, no doubt, is upon you and increases to far-reaching measure. I decree that your days ahead are good, that your family is blessed, that your ministry is blessed, that your careers are blessed, that everything you touch it is blessed and that you'll have an answer even before you speak because you start something prior to the events that are ahead of your life i decree and I declare that the things that are coming ahead are for you that are aligned for you they are ordained for you they are realigned for you they are positioned for you they are directed for you and all is well with you in jesus mighty name. Give him a mighty name of praise. If you're sick in your body, receive your healing now. Nobody needs to lay a hand on you. If you're struggling anywhere in your life, just receive by that simple faith. Done. Done. Now if you're here and you've never given your life to Christ, if you're there and you want to be born again, Repeat this one after me. Best decision you're ever going to make. Say, Lord Jesus, today I receive you as my personal Lord and Savior. I believe that you died for my sins and was raised for my glory. Today I give you my life. Amen. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Sonero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at sonerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.sonero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at UMA Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Venero. Venero, make manifest.